Bhagavad Gita as it is, Chapter 8, Attaining the Supreme, Text 1. Arjuna Uvacha Kim Tabrama Kim Adiatmam Kim Kama Purushotama Adi Bhutam Chakim Braktam Adi Devam Kim Uchyate Translation Arjuna inquired, O my Lord, O Supreme Person, what is Brahman? What is the Self? What are fruitative activities? What is this material manifestation, and what are the demigods? Please explain this to me. Purport. In this chapter, Lord Krishna answers these different questions of Arjuna, beginning with, What is Brahman? The Lord also explains karma, fruitive activities, devotional service and yoga principles, and devotional service in its pure form. The Srimad Bhagavatam explains that the supreme absolute truth is known as Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. In addition, the living entity, individual soul, is also called Brahman. Arjuna also inquires about Atma, which refers to body, soul, and mind. According to the Vedic dictionary, Atma refers to the mind, soul, body, and senses also. Arjuna has addressed the Supreme Lord as Purushottama, Supreme Person, which means that he was putting these questions not simply to a friend, but to the Supreme Person knowing him to be the supreme authority, able to give definitive answers. Text 2 Ariya jana katam kotra desmen marusudana rayana kalecha katam jeneyo sinyatatmavi Translation How does this Lord of Sacrifice live in the body, and in which part does he live, O Madhusudana? And how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? Purport The Lord of Sacrifice accepts Indra and Vishnu. Vishnu is the chief of the primal demigods, including Brahma and Shiva, and Indra is the chief of the administrative demigods. Both Indra and Vishnu are worshipped by Yagna sacrifice performances. But here Arjuna asks who is actually the Lord of Yagna sacrifice and how is the Lord residing within the body of the living entity? Arjuna addresses the Lord as Madhusudana because Krishna once killed a demon named Madhu. Actually, these questions, which are of the nature of doubts, should not have risen in the mind of Arjuna because Arjuna is a Krishna conscious devotee. Therefore, these doubts are like demons. Since Krishna is so expert in killing demons, Arjuna here addresses him as Madhusudana so that Krishna might kill the demoniac doubts that arise in, in Arjuna's mind. Now the word prayanakale in this verse is very significant because whatever we do in life will be tested at the time of death. Arjuna fears that at the time of death those who are in Krishna consciousness will forget the Supreme Lord because at such a time body functions are disrupted and the mind may be in a panic-stricken state. Therefore Maharaj Kulashikara, a great devotee, prays, My dear Lord, may I die immediately now that I am healthy, so that the swan of my mind may enter into the stem of thy lotus feet. This metaphor is used because the swan often takes pleasure in entering the stem of the lotus flower. Similarly, the mind of the pure devotee is drawn to the lotus feet of the Lord. Maharaj Kalashikara fears that at the moment of death his throat will be so choked up that he will not be able to chant the holy names, so it is better to die immediately. Arjuna questions how one's mind can remain fixed on Krishna's lotus feet at such times. Text 3 Sri Bhagavan Vacha Aksharam Brahma Paramam Svabhavo Diyatmam Vajate Translation The Supreme Lord said, The indestructible, transcendental living entity is called Brahman, and his eternal nature is called the Self. Action pertaining to the development of these material bodies is called karma, or fruitative activities. Purport Brahman is indestructible and eternally existing and its constitution is not changed at any time. But beyond Brahman there is Parabrahman, 
Brahman refers to the living entity, and Parabrahman refers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The constitutional position of the living entity is different from the position he takes in the material world. In material consciousness, his nature is to try to be the Lord of matter, but in spiritual Krishna consciousness, his position is to serve the Supreme. When the living entity is in material consciousness, he has to take on various bodies in the material world. That is called karma, or varied creation, by the force of material consciousness. In Vedic literature, the living entity is called Jivatma and Brahman, but he is never called Parabrahman. The living entity, Jivatma, takes a different position. Sometimes he merges into the dark material nature and identifies himself with matter, and sometimes he identifies himself with the superior spiritual nature. Therefore, he is called the Supreme Lord's marginal energy. According to this identification with material or spiritual nature, he receives a material or spiritual body. In material nature, he may take a body from any of the 8,400,000 species of life, but in spiritual nature, he has only one body. In material nature, he is sometimes manifested as a man, demigod, an animal, a beast, bird, etc., according to his karma. To attain material heavenly planets and enjoy their facilities, he sometimes performs sacrifices, yagna, but when his merit is exhausted, he returns to earth again in the form of a man. In the process of sacrifice, the living entity makes specific sacrifices to attain specific heavenly planets and consequently reaches them. When the merit of sacrifice is exhausted, then the living entity descends to earth in the form of rain, then takes on the form of grains, and the grains are eaten by man and transformed into semen, which impregnates a woman, and thus the living entity once again attains the human form to perform sacrifice and so repeat the same cycle. In this way, the living entity perpetually comes and goes on the material path. The Krishna conscious person, however, avoids such sacrifices. He takes directly to Krishna consciousness and thereby prepares himself to return to Godhead. Impersonalist commentators on the Gita unreasonably assume that Brahman takes the form of Jiva in the material world, and to substantiate this, they refer to chapter 15, verse 7 of the Gita. But this verse also speaks of the living entity as an eternal fragment of myself. The fragment of God, the living entity, may fall down into the material world, but the Supreme Lord, Achyutta, never falls down. Therefore, this assumption that the Supreme Brahman assumes the form of Jiva is not acceptable. It is important to remember that in Vedic literature, Brahman, the living entity, is distinguished from Parabrahman, the Supreme Lord. Text 4 Arivutam Kisharo Bhava Purushaschar Hidivatam Ariyagnoham Evatra Translation Physical nature is known to be endlessly mutable. The universe is the cosmic form of the Supreme Lord, and I am the Lord represented as the Supersoul dwelling in the heart of every embodied being. Purport The physical nature is constantly changing. Material bodies generally pass through six stages. They are born, they grow, they remain for some duration, they produce some byproducts, they dwindle, and then they vanish. This physical nature is called adivuta, Because it is created at a certain point and will be annihilated at a certain point, the conception of the universal form of the Supreme Lord that includes all the demigods and their different planets is called adidevatam. The individual soul, Jiva, accompanies the body. The Supersoul, a plenary representation of Lord Krishna, is called the Paramatma, or Adiyagna, and is situated in the heart. The word Eva is particularly important in the context of this verse, because by this word the Lord stresses that the Paramatma is not different from him. The Supersoul, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, seated beside the individual soul, is the witness of the individual soul's activities, and is the source of consciousness. The Supersoul gives the Jiva an opportunity to act freely, and he witnesses his activities. The functions of all these different manifestations of the Supreme Lord automatically become clarified for the pure Krishna-conscious devotee engaged in transcendental service of the Lord. 
the gigantic universal form of the Lord, called Adidevatam, is, con is contemplated by the neophyte who cannot approach the Supreme Lord in his manifestation as Supersoul. The neophyte is advised to contemplate the universal form whose legs are considered the lower planets, and whose eyes are considered the sun and moon, and whose head is considered the upper planetary system. Text 5 Anta kale cha mameva smaran muktava kalevaram yaprayanti samadavam yanti nasyatra samshaya Translation and whoever at the time of death quits his body, remembering me alone, at once attains my nature. All this there is, of this there is no doubt. Purport In this verse, the importance of Krishna consciousness is stressed. Anyone who quits his body in Krishna consciousness is at once transferred to the transcendental abode of the, Shri, of the Supreme Lord. The words maran, remembering, is important. Remembrance of Krishna is not possible for the impure soul who has not practiced Krishna consciousness in devotional service. To remember Krishna, one should chant the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare, incessantly, following in the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya, being more tolerant than the tree, humbler than the grass, and offering all respect to others without requiring respect in return. In such a way, one will be able to depart from the body successfully remembering Krishna and so attain the supreme goal. Text 6 Yam yam vapi smaran bhavam Tiya jadyante kalevaram Tam tam eviti kunteya Saratat bhava bhavita Translation Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. Purport The process of changing one's nature at the critical moment of death is here explained. How can one die in the proper state of mind? Maharaj Bharata thought of a deer at the time of death and so was transferred to the form of life, to that form of life. However, as a deer, Maharaj Bharata could remember his past activities. Of course, the cumulative effect of the thoughts and actions of one's life influences one's thoughts at the moment of death. Therefore, the actions of this life determine one's future state of being. If one is transcendentally absorbed in Krishna's service, then his next body will be transcendental, spiritual, not physical. Therefore, the chanting of Hare Krishna is the best process for successfully changing one's state of being to transcendental life. Text 7 Tasmat Saveshu Kareshu Maham Manus Mara Yut Yacha Mayaya Pita Mano Bhuti Maham Evishyas Yasa Mishaya Translation Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting. With your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. Purport This instruction to Arjuna is very important for all men engaged in material activities. The Lord does not say that one should give up his prescribed duties or engagements. One can continue them and at the same time think of Krishna by chanting Hare Krishna. This will free one from material contamination and engage the mind and intelligence in Krishna. By chanting Krishna's names, one will be transferred to the supreme planet, Krishna Loka, without a doubt. Text 8 Abhyasa Yoga Yuktena Chetasa Nanya Gamina Paramam Purusham Divyam Yati Pratanu Chintayan Translation He who meditates on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me, Undeviated from the path, he, O Partha, Arjuna, is sure to reach me. Purport In this verse, Lord Krishna stresses the importance of remembering him. One's memory of Krishna is revived by chanting the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna. By this process of chanting and hearing the sound vibration of the Supreme Lord, one's ear, tongue, and mind are engaged. This mystic meditation is very easy to practice, and it helps one attain the Supreme Lord. Purusham means enjoyer. Although living entities enjoy 
to, to the marginal energy of the Supreme Lord, they are in material contamination. They think themselves enjoyers, but they are not the Supreme Enjoyer. Here it is clearly stated that the Supreme Enjoyer is the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his different manifestations and plenary expansions as Narayana, Vasudeva, etc. The devotees can constantly think of the object of worship, the Supreme Lord, in any of his features, Narayana, Krishna, Rama, etc., by chanting Hare Krishna. This practice will purify him, and at the end of his life, due to his constant chanting, he will be transferred to the kingdom of God. Yoga practice is meditation on the Supersoul within. Similarly, by chanting Hare Krishna, one's, one fixes his mind always on the Supreme Lord. The mind is fickle, and therefore it is necessary to engage the mind by force to think of Krishna. One example often given is that of the caterpillar that thinks of becoming a butterfly, and so is transformed into a butterfly in the same life. Similarly, if we constantly think of Krishna, it is certain that at the end of our lives we shall have the same bodily constitution as Krishna. Text 9 Kavim Puranam Anushashitaram Anu Aniyama Sam Anusmaridya Savasya Dataram Achintyarupam Arityavanam Tamasa Parastat Translation one should meditate upon the Supreme Person as the one who knows everything, as he who is the oldest, who is the controller, who is smaller than the smallest, who is the maintainer of everything, who is beyond all material conception, who is inconceivable, and who is always a person. He is luminous like the sun, and being transcendental is beyond this material nature. PURPORT The process of thinking of the Supreme is mentioned in this verse. The foremost point is that he is not impersonal or void. One cannot meditate on something impersonal or void. That is very difficult. The process of thinking of Krishna, however, is very easy and is factually stated herein. First of all, he is Purusha, spiritual, Rama, and Krishna, and is described herein as Kavim. That is, he knows past, present, and future, and therefore knows everything. He is the Otis personality because he is the origin of everything. Everything is born out of him. He is also the supreme controller of the universe, maintainer and instructor of humanity. He is smaller than the smallest. The living entity is one ten thousandth part of the tip of hair, but the Lord is so inconceivably small that he enters into the heart of this particle. Therefore, he is called smaller than the smallest. As the supreme, he can enter into the atom and into the heart of the smallest and control him as the supersoul. Although so small, he is still all-pervading and is maintaining everything. By him, all these planetary systems are sustained. We often wonder how these big planets are floating in the air. It is stated here that the Supreme Lord, by his inconceivable energy, is sustaining all these big planets and systems of galaxies. The word achintya, inconceivable, is very significant in this connection. God's energy is beyond our conception, beyond our thinking jurisdiction, and is therefore called inconceivable, achintya. Who can argue this point? He pervades this material world, and yet it is beyond it. We cannot even comprehend this material world, which is insignificant compared to the spiritual world. So how can we comprehend what is beyond? Achintya means that which is beyond this material world, that which... Our argument, logic, and philosophical speculation cannot touch that which is inconceivable. Therefore, intelligent persons avoiding useless argument and speculation should accept what is stated in scriptures like the Vedas, Gita, and Srimad Bhagavatam and follow the principles they set down. This will lead one to understanding. Text 10 Rayana Kale Manasa Chalena Bhaktiya yukto yoga balena jeva Bruho madye pranam avishya samyak Satam param purusham apeti divyam Translation One who at the time of death fixes his life air between the eyebrows and in full devotion engages himself in remembering the Supreme Lord will certainly attain to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Purport 
In this verse, it is clearly stated that at the time of death, the mind must be fixed in devotion on the Supreme Godhead. For those practiced in yoga, it is recommended that they raise the life force between the eyebrows. But for a pure devotee who does not practice such yoga, the mind should always be engaged in Krishna consciousness, so that at death he can remember the Supreme by his grace. This is explained in verse 14. The particular use of the word yoga balana is significant in this verse because without practice of yoga, one cannot come to this transcendental state of being at the time of death. One cannot suddenly remember the Supreme Lord at death unless he is practiced in some yoga system, especially the system of bhakti yoga. Since one's mind at death is very disturbed, one should practice transcendence through yoga during one's life. 